WVIZ Sports presents High School Football. Tonight from the Mentor Stadium, it's a greater Cleveland Conference battle between the 9-0 Euclid Panthers running game that averages 37 points per game and the 8-1 Cardinals of Mentor and their balanced attack that can score through the air or on the ground. everyone this is Mike Masson along with Brian Powers and we've got weather that just won't quit now Mentor wants to throw it and we've got a heavy wind coming out of the southeast Euclid wants to run and it's raining and it's going to be a wet field well right now the field's not bad and it would the passing game could be affected because that's the key to the night's ball game Mentor has to put that ball in the air they have the passer a couple of good receivers so we'll have to wait and watch that weather like everybody else well, Brian, it's the 10th game in our 25th season of covering high school football, and the 10th game never changes. For almost two-thirds of the teams, it means either a conference championship or getting in the playoffs. It really is, and this year, just like every other year, this is one of the big ones. Across town, there's a couple other big football games. But right here, Mentor and Euclid, conference, everything going on it, and Euclid, of course, would like to remain undefeated. Well, they're undefeated right now because they won that court case, and uh, so they're going to be in the playoffs. They are 9-0. and But that's not why we're here. We're here because there are two great football teams going to be playing football, and we want to bring it to you. Brian, looking at Euclid, power, exceptional power running game. It really is. We talk about football teams that can run, but this team has been able to run every year, every ball game. They move with that ball. They have a couple of great running backs. Quarterbacks can feed the ball off, fullback can pound up in the middle, so they have everything in their running game. They'll try to do that again tonight. But a good running game also, believe it or not, has got to start with a quarterback who is deceptive, and they've got one, a great one in John uh, uh, Arlesic. Arlesic is an excellent quarterback, has had a good season. He's kind of a smooth quarterback with a know-how to run Coach Tom Banks' offense. This passer has completed 25 of 52 passes, good for 18 plus yards per completion. John is very capable of running with the pigskin so he can hand off and move in. Speedster has that special ability to break away at any time. Rashawn is the leading scorer in the district and of course in the Greater Cleveland Conference. Mike, he'll be a lot of fun to watch tonight. <laughs> he can go with that football. And the thing is, earlier on, we saw him. What a great smile. He's a happy kid. Yeah, it really is. He's out here. He's working hard. He's ready for the ball game. He's very happy. And then when the fans came by with a little extra cheer for him, he responded, said he's ready to go. Jumping up and down. Now, we haven't seen it this, this year, is that Euclid's going to be using a three-man front. And they are big people. And the biggest one happens to be a 300-pound Mark Parker. Yes, they do. They have size again, like they've had the last few years defensively. And this huge defensive lineman plays a strong and steady game at the defensive tackle spot. Please notice the three-man line tonight, the front line, with the two outside people will be up. That's a little different than we've seen all season. Mark is a two-year starter and a co-captain of this ball club. So they've got an awful lot of help in there, too. They've given up less than a touchdown per ball game. They're a high-scoring team, but they also are awful tough on defense. You take a look at uh, Mentor, Brian, and that is an offense that's extremely focused. And it starts with that focus is John Wilhelm, their great tailback. A tremendous year that he's had in this conference for this ball club. A veteran running back who knows how to find the opening in a defensive wall. John is the type of back that you need in the eye formation. He has speed and power. When Menor runs, he will be the workhorse. This senior has 948 yards and 10 TDs this season. But they will go to a passing game they have all year, and they have a good split end in number 81, Bob Farley. Speed and excellent hands are the trademarks of Bob Farley. The two-year starter at split end for the Cardinals, he's been very effective offensive player for coach Dick Kirschbaum. Look for him to be one of the favorite targets of his quarterback in this football game. Bob, it's, I'll tell you, they've got a great quarterback, is uh, G. Antonio. He can throw the ball. Oh, he can. He's had a couple of great years for him out here. It's the reason they've only lost one football game. And he can put that ball in the air. The game, game, and he's capable of running with the football. And the uh, Cardinals certainly have a lot of skilled people in their offensive backfield. They're going to be using a 5-2, which means it's going to be tough to run against it. And they've got a good one in their tackle, Chris Luoma. Yeah, their defense has been pleasant. It's been a good team all year on defensively. It's strong, tough. Likes to hit the ball carries. That's what this tackle is good. And that's Lu Luoma. And some of the people 
talked about him as one of the tougher defensive men in the league. Chris has had 70 tackles, two sacks, and a fumble recovery. And Mike, this lineman will also play guard, so he's one of those two-way performers. He must be a pretty tough character. Yeah, he certainly is. And the one thing about their offensive line, not the normal size we've seen here at Mentor. Uh, some people say that they used to have horses, now they've got ponies, but they've got quickness. They do. They're quick. Uh, they have enough size so they can get out, and they get outside so they can use that soft rollout that the quarterback likes to find his receiver. Chad Green gets down the field, and they can throw that pass, and linemen have to pull out a little bit. They're doing a very good job of it this year. We've got so many talented players on this field. Brian talked about Wilhelm. Here's a power runner with soft hands. He's scored on the ground. He's also scored via the pass. And the other running back for Euclid who's going to be worth the price of admission is Pearson. Now, he's got 12 TDs with over 1,200 yards already in just nine games. Isn't that something? You see the stats of the two running backs for Euclid, the statistics of the mentor quarterback, Wilhelm stat. Hey, this is a tough league with some <laughs> great football players, and we're going to watch them tonight. You, we certainly are. We hope the rain, rain holds off for both teams so there can be sort of an even game, even as you can get. <laughs> So we'll be uh, waiting to um, greet the uh, Cardinals as well as the Panthers of Euclid. We'll introduce you to the starting players and then get the kickoff right after this timeout. And welcome back to the Mentor Cardinal Stadium in Mentor, Ohio. Euclid won the toss. Of course, they elected to receive. Mentor will kick off and defend the actually it is the south goal it's south southeast a little bit but it's the south goal and the wind is still blowing and that's coming out of the southeast you can see it on the flag and it's been changing direction sometimes just coming almost directly uh, out of the east and we look at the cardinal flag there and that's something they'll have to see because basically they're the passing team they'll worry a little bit more about the wind the running team ready to receive the ball will be the panthers of euclid This game's underway. We got Green, Pastore, and Farley. And it goes out of the end zone. So that means that Yuku would take it over from the 20. First down. The quarterback you're going to have, John Arlissick. The players highlighted in yellow are returning starters. The offensive backs, John Arles uh, Arlissick. We've got uh, Pepe Pearson. Rasham Jernigan, Joe Sweet, he's the flanker, Flynn is the split. The offensive line, Nasi, Wondersleben, D. Bartolomeo, Thompson, Schnapp, and McDougal. And this is a hand to Pepe, number one. He takes it, and he's brought down by Brian Boyle, the end. The uh, mentor defense, the front five, we got Brian Boyle, Chris Luoma, Craig Orsag, Morgan, and Brian Kisco. And they have nine sacks in the uh, secondary. The linebackers are Derek Stetter, Cottrell, and Kirschbaum. Green, Wilson, and Hoth are in the secondary. This is to the fullback. This is Jernigan, and he's dragged down from behind by number 25, Chris Wilson, the safety, and he gets set up for the first down. No, they spot it inside the 30 at about the 28-yard line. So the inside running game that Euclid is noted for with their fullback, Jernigan, he'll go up into the right side. You can see they're starting the quarterback giving the inside on the option play. Almost breaks it here for the first down, just a little bit short of it. A nice tackle by Wilson, the safety man. So it'll be a third and one with the nose of the ball just touching Euclid's 29. Hand off to Jenkins and he is stopped. Chris Wilson, the safety on a blitz, came in and stepped him right at the line of scrimmage. The defense for the Cardinals has held. Nice defensive call. You take a gamble, but they expect him to go up in the middle, and that's 25. That's two tackles in a row that he made, but that's the big one to stop the third down charge. For Euclid, punting will be Kevin Bremer. He's averaging about 34 yards a kick, standing on his own 15. Deep people are Chad Green and Bob Farley. Farley 81, Green is number nine. And this is taken. 
second by Green. Boy, he doesn't get too far. The forward progress would have taken him about the 44-yard line, a 29-yard punt. The offense, the players highlighted in yellow are returning starters. D'Antonio, the quarterback, Will Helm, the tail, Ronaldo, the fullback, Green, the flanker, and Bob Farley is going to be the flanker. And, and you can see they have a lot of experiences. Moses, Carson, Descartes, Massey, Helen, and Morgan are up front offensively. Long count by Gian Antonio. He hands off to Ronaldo, the fullback, and the defense responds. No gain. And Brandon Bigamonia, sophomore, number nine, brought him down. The Euclid defense, the front three are Willie Reed, Rashawn Greer, and Mark Parker. Parker's at 300 pounds. That front three averages 262. That's Big Ten size. The linebackers, Sam DiBartolomeo, Adaro Brooks, Cantini, and Reichman. The secondary is uh, Tolbert, Bigham, Jackson, and Brenham. And that secondary has six interceptions so far this season. It's going to be a third and ten. And this splits to the near side and the flanker to the far side. And it's a completion at midfield. Play action, good move. Chad Green still on his feet. He crosses the 40 and a first down. It took the strong safety, Devin Jackson, to bring him down. Good piece of second effort by Chad Green, the junior. Chantonio, the veteran quarterback, we expected him to put that ball in the air. He did on the second down play right out there to Chad Green. Number nine has been his favorite receiver. He's caught 35 passes this season. Has some nice running ability with it to move it up the field and the first first down for the Cardinals. Farley split to the near side. The flank is going to be green to the far side. Green comes in motion. The tailback, and he gets close to the 35-yard line. He runs into the big people. Rashawn Greer at 250 and uh, Mark Parker at 300. There's head coach Tom Bank in his seventh year for the Euclid Panthers, an excellent coach, coach at Lake Catholic, and is in the seventh year, has very good success here. We know the strong teams he's had three of the past four years in state playoff. It's going to be a second and eight. Tailback is Wilhelm. D'Antonio gets loose. And he's forced out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. And Adam Reichman, number 30, a linebacker, forced him out. And Mark Parker was chasing Gentonio. Look at the stats on this for Gentonio. 95 out of 147, 64 percent, 1,300 yards, 12 TDs, and only four interceptions. What a season he's had. He'd like, of course, top it off tonight. Get this ball team going in the offense for Menor. He's a three-year starter. So it's a 36. And he completes that one to, I think, at the uh, split end. Farley, let's wait to see. No, that was nine. That was Chad Green. And Van Talbert was there on the stop. So wide open offense that head coach Dick Kirschbaum had that time with Green out wide. A lot of coaching experience in this area out of North Ridgeville. Very successful at Lakewood for five years. He's won championships everywhere he's been. He's a graduate of Capital University. So it's a fourth and three and they're going for it. He's looking for Wilhelm and just overthrows him. Wilhelm was wide open, but a lot of, lot of pressure put on Don Gentonio. Almost had it out there. We got a chance to talk to the Euclid coach, head coach Tom Bank. Talked about it many years of coaching. And has he ever had running backs like he has this year, between two of them over 2,000 yards? Uh, no, we haven't. Um, I've had some outstanding running backs at Lake Catholic, a young man by the name of Steve Prelock. We also had... Uh, a young man by the name of P.J. Allen and obviously the famous Robert Smith at Euclid. 
but I can't really say we've had a tandem like Pepe Pearson or Rashawn Jernigan. Uh, I've never had anyone, um, any pair like this. You have Chris oh, yeah. in a row 31, hand off to Pearson. And Pearson gets to about the 35. About a three, long three yard pickup, and Eric Anger. Anger, who is injured, he had a knee problem, but uh, he's seeing action now for the Cardinals of Mentor. He's a six foot one, 205 pound senior. He's wearing number 58, a co captain. A second and seven after that three yard pickup, just shy of Euclid's 35. Journey then gets back to Journey then, and Arlesa keeps it, and he gets a first down, or very close to it, as he crosses the 40 to about the 43. Nice run that time. Dick Kirschbaum, the coach at Mentor. We talked about his defense strong all year, and we want to know if he had some pleasant surprises since the beginning of the season up here to the last game. Yeah, our defense has played well all year long, and we've been extremely pleased. In fact, we had to replace nine starters. Uh, our defensive coaching staff's done a great job in, in uh, getting these kids to play according to the techniques we've been teaching them, and they play very well as a team, and they play hard all, all game, and we've been extremely pleased by them. Eric Anger, who's been a starter all year, he won't start tonight. He was injured last week, uh, has played well for us. Chris Wilson is a defensive back. Uh, you know, these guys, Brian Holt, they've just played extremely well in our secondary because they run well, has made a great uh, effort to keep big plays down. So that's a real important thing for us tonight, to not allow Euclid to have big plays. Well, he uh, would have missed uh, Anger because he's made the last two stops. That carry was by Rashawn uh, Jernigan. They had got a first down. Now they picked up two on that first carry. It's a second and eight from the 46. That is Mentor's 46. And that could have been a delay game. We'll see. Now there's some movement no. up in the front line. A procedure call will be the preliminary call. And the official that we're looking at is Dan Mason in the white hat, wearing ball, a white hat tonight. Start, 78, white. And that's the call Dead from ball, Dan Mason. Ball start, 78, white. Making sure everybody knows that the umpire, Ed DeMarto, the linesman, Gerald Say, the line judge, Jim Sharpman, and Tom Sawarik is our back judge tonight. That loss is back to the 41. That'll bring up a... Uh, Second and 13 with 5.28 to go in his score of the first quarter. And Euclid calls a timeout with that 5.28 showing on the clock. You know, it is possible to get too high for a ball game. With all the good news they had uh, with the association and the judge ruling that they can, uh, they don't forfeit any games. And you saw the look on the kids' faces. They were just oh. totally elated and just pumped before the game. And it's possible they get too high. That, that can happen, and it has happened many times, and more in high school ball probably than anywhere else. And that time out, the quarterback, John Arlesic, came up and looked over. He's upset about whatever he saw. Went over immediately to the head coach, Tom Bank. They call a timeout. Coach is in there now. See, so giving the instructions to the quarterback and talking to the rest of the offensive ball players. You know, John Olesic, the quarterback for Euclid, doesn't throw that off and really don't need to with the scores yeah, that's nice. that they build up, averaging 37 points a ball game. So 25 out of 52 for 48%, which is not very bad at all. Boy, the Euclid is in force here tonight. As a matter of fact, Channel 5 even had their microwave truck out in front earlier. So it's second and 13 now. Now, Arlesic wants to throw. Finds a receiver, which is Jernigan for his 10th reception of the season. And Eric Anger was there to stop him. Jernigan with uh, 6.7 average on 139 carries for 928 yards, 19 TDs, and two touchdown passes. Nine for 16-yard average by the air. We could spend a quarter talking about those stats well, and trying you. to get out. It's easy to see why the media is out here. Two top teams in the area playing. A third and ten. The defense so far for Mentor is held. Twin backs now. Split. And completes it. First down and is worth out of bounds. Chasing him was Chris Wilson, the safety. Well, he's got speed to burn here in the backfield. Both Pearson and Jer Jernigan, four fives in the 40. There's a split backfield with two backs on either side and the quarterback taking a deep drop. 
Couldn't find anybody there. Rashawn Jernigan just rolls slightly on the underthrow underneath the defense, takes off to the sideline, just about ready to turn the corner. Again, number 25, Chris Wilson with a big stop, and Jernigan just keeps flying across almost to Lake Erie out here the Menor Stadium. And another first down, the handoff is to Jernigan, and he gets about to the 40. And Jason Cottrell, the junior, brought him down. It's amazing. Parson uh, is 5'10", 160, 5'9", 160 for Jernigan, but they run with such power and they've got such great speed. They do. They have the power on the inside. Jernigan mainly will go up between tackles. Pepe Pearson is usually the outside threat, although Jernigan has the speed once he gets inside to scoot out to the outside. So it's a second and six from the 40. Mentors 40. And a handoff, that is to Pearson. And he draws a crowd as he gets to about the 43. Leading that charge. And in the front was Chris Luoma, number 76, and John Kirschbaum, the linebacker. Some good, good line play by Sean Thompson, number 78. Big guy over on the right guard moves out so that Pepe Pearson in the back with 120 rushes already this season, 10 plus yards. Look at that, Mike, 1,222 yards. Ron Carino didn't have that in four years of high school. I was going to say, Four that's years a of grade school. Well, you didn't do much better. I, I know. I had, to, I had to get it in first, though. This is a keeper by Olesic. Tries to get outside, and he gets enough for the first down as he crosses the 35. He gets close to the 30, where Chris Wilson again had to make the stop, and Wilson's making too many tackles because he's a safety. A chance to watch this offensive play. There's the quarterback on the option. He had it in. He had a hard time pulling it out. He runs with it. He fakes with the right hand with the pitch. And right here, he just about loses it as he goes down. The ball pops out, but he's down on the corner. Let's watch it again from another angle. Well, he lost it before he hit, I think. And it's out there on the sideline. It's out of bounds. So another first down. The ball is sitting on minutes 31. Pearson sees it opening inside. Pounds. He's trying to bowl over people, and again, Wilson, the safety, and the quarterback, Chad Green, had to bring him down. Oh, that running game is punishing. 78 and 73, Sean Thompson, Jim Champ. You can see him right in your camera to the left side. They cleared the hole. They just came out. They can block, gentlemen. They just went across the defense and gave their back a chance, and that's all a runner like Pearson needs. He can fly down the field. Number one, Pepe Pearson. First down from the 14. And they give it to Pearson again. And gets at six. So Pepe Pearson gets his 13 touchdown rushing. He move, helped move the team right down the field. Trying for the extra point is Steve Sirk, number 65. He's 42 of 45. Excellent kicker. And our listen will hold. And it's good. So with 3-13 remaining in the first quarter, the Panthers of Euclid take the lead, 7 to nothing, And they got their, after that timeout, got their uh, offense in gear. To the timeout, they had a nice pass from our, to Jernigan, and here's the run that we see with a touchdown. It was a handoff to the inside, and it's just speed to the outside. For Pepe Pearson, the 5'10", only a sophomore, goes to the outside, almost brought down by Wilson, but a yard short, so there's six on the board, and then the extra point kick was good. We're looking at seven on the board for the Euclid Panthers. Menner hasn't scored here in the first quarter. Well, you saw in that replay that the uh, Menner line is being beaten off the ball and they're opening up holes. Now the Panthers uh, we just can't say enough about that front line. They have been devastating on their blocking tonight. Four, five first downs against one. Five for Euclid, one for Mender. This is Kevin Bremer, number 20. And this is picked up by Farley. They get the ball, the winner does out to their own 27. It'll be a first down. 
Coming up to the three minute mark in the first period. We've got Farley, the end split to the far side. We've got Green flanked to the near side. Granello is a long setback. Wilhelm goes in motion. And he completes it to Bob Farley. Nice throw on the run by Don Gentonio. Nice passing pattern. Put a lot of pressure on the left defensive side for Euclid. It's a short roll out with Jantonio to the right side. Now he has three defenders out there flooding that area. This time he picks out Bob Farley, his split end, who comes across. Farley is the senior, excellent football player. He has the favorite target along with Chad Green for quarterback Don Jantonio. Sure is, Brian. He's got 18 receptions and only one touchdown, but he is a clutch receiver. He has that speed to break it, too. They're going to bring out the chain to check it with 2.28 to go, first period. Coming in the lineup is Don Pastore, who will go in for Chad Green at the flanker position for Mentor. And they've got Green as the flanker out to the near side. Far they got two flankers in. Green is still in the lineup. And another completion. And this is the tight end, Doug Morgan, at 6'3", 245, 6'5".